good afternoon. This is Marina from TPA Amsterdam. I'm here with Mark, a partner from Amsterdam as well. And we are going to talk about the impact of technology in taxpayers' rights and how this raised more controversy. So should we start? I'm going to start just giving you a brief uh, introduction to the agenda of today. So for five minutes, I'm just going to about, talk about taxpayers' rights, where they're enacted currently. And for 20 minutes, then I will discuss uh, the cases in the Dutch Supreme Court uh, that were related, actually, to automated systems. Uh, afterwards, I'm going to discuss what tax authorities are currently doing and how they are using AI and robotics. Um, afterwards, we're going to talk about uh, what changed, what is the disruption in taxpayers' rights in the tax technology arena, and I will open the floor to some questions. Okay. Um, so setting the scene, so where can we find taxpayers' rights that are actually enacted? So you can find this either in national law. So for example, some constitutions have some rights enacted for taxpayers, so the right to information, the right to confidentiality, and also in criminal law aspects. What I put it here in an example is the Nemo Tenemo Tenetur principle, that is basically you, the right to not self-incriminate. And under international law, you can find taxpayers' rights enacted in the European Convention of Human Rights. So Article 1, uh, the Protocol 1, actually says that everyone has the right of privacy. Uh, in the European Charter of Fundamental Rights, Article 8, for example, also gives data protection to taxpayers. In the Treaty of Function of the EU as well, so everyone has the right to protection of data. And in the OECD, the OECD actually has a booklet on taxpayers' rights. So this is where we can find taxpayers' rights are currently enacted. And which taxpayers' rights are them? So for example, the right to be informed. So you have the right to know uh, how much taxes you need to pay by law. The right to quality of service is actually related to you need to have uh, proper assistance from the tax authorities in your communication with it. Uh, the right to pay no more than the correct amount of tax, it's your only you are only obliged to, apply, to, to pay the amount of tax that is actually applied by law. The right to finality is related to the, to the right to know the deadlines. So you need to know the deadline of your tax assessment. You have the right to know this. The right to privacy is basically the right that your data will be treated accordingly by tax authorities, and you actually have only that this data will only be shared with relevant people and that tax authorities will not go beyond the data that they need for certain finality. The, the right to confidentiality, basically, it's what it says. So you have the right that your data remains confidential to the tax authorities. The right of access, ratification, erasure, blockage, it's actually related to the fact that you have the right to amend your tax return and the due uh, deadlines. And the right to a legal remedy, uh, this is also an act in the European Charter of Human Rights. So everybody has the, the right to an effective legal remedy. And the right to a fair and just tax system is that uh, whenever designing tax policy, you actually, the tax system actually needs to take into account circumstances of a certain taxpayer and also make sure that um, you have the capacity to pay that tax. The right to retain a representation is basically you have the right to uh, allege, just make it alleged for any representation of your choice. Um, I see here that we have a question. And okay, Johan, can you hear me now? You have audio? Uh, just let me know if you don't, okay? Um, okay. So this is currently all the, right, the taxpayers' rights that we currently have either in national law or in international law, and these rights are actually in, uh, they are actually connected to each other, and this is, makes even a better system for taxpayers' rights to be enforced. Okay, so now the second part is actually okay. We talk about uh, taxpayers' rights. Where are they currently? And we are going to talk about this case in the Dutch Supreme Court. And in this case, taxpayers' rights were briefly discussed in the context of automated systems. So what was the case about, actually? 
So we are talking about a real estate tax assessment. And in this real estate tax assessment, the taxpayer did a form, which is like the data injection. And in this form, there were some variables like neighbor, uh, neighborhood, and size. And this was input into a system that extracts and converts the data. And then afterwards, through a risk assessment engine, and the output data was a final tax and risk assessment. So in this case, the taxpayer asked the tax authority to disclose how this tax assessment was made. So what are the underlying assumptions? Uh, and, the, and the tax authorities denied access to it. So they went to the Supreme Court eventually. And in the Supreme Court, uh, the main argument of the tax authorities was, we don't have access to the underlying assumptions and choices of the software. The Supreme Court ruled that actually needs to give access to all documents related to the case. It doesn't matter if it's part of an automated system. The tax authority should be able to be transparent and explain the underlying assumptions of that system to know which data it was used. So the taxpayer has the right to, be, to, to have this data and because otherwise he cannot contest the measure. So we create a discrepancy of powers. So th this case was quite significant, and this actually shows how technology is already implicating taxpayers. Because once your communication with the tax authorities actually reach a point where they cannot disclose because not even them can uh, explain the assumptions of the software, like you have several taxpayers' rights being breached, and uh, we expect that in the future and in the next parts of the slides, we're actually going to talk about it, that uh, more and more tax authorities will be using data-driven automated systems. And it's important that the communication, the lines of communication between tax authorities and taxpayers remain efficient in the way that they can still uh, be able to understand what is, how the tax assessment is actually made. Um, so this is the point in this case. Uh, so that makes it a uh, precedent for, for the future. Um, in this part, we're actually going to talk about, so what do we see as a trend globally, what tax authorities are currently doing? So tax authorities is, is not new, but tax administration were always uh, driven by data. They always had your financial data, your personal data. They even know like how much do you contribute to political parties. So they were always data driven. What is changing is actually how they collect and how they convert this data. So one thing is to have data flowing everywhere, a bunch of data flowing everywhere. When you actually streamline this data to a sense that you can actually use AI or robotics to understand this data, and for example, nowadays you can see target audits where it's the risk assessment was made more efficient by automated systems. Um, and when you fill your tax return, for example, in the Netherlands, you also have pre-populated tax returns where you just need to tick a box and just to confirm that the information is real. So nowadays, tax authorities are becoming smarter and smarter due to technology. And this is not necessarily bad. We are not profiling this as a bad thing. But it's important that tax authorities keep the line of the communication of the taxpayer uh, open and transparent in the sense that taxpayers can understand how they are being profiling and why. So I have some uh, some some examples of some technology that's currently being used. So VAT information sharing, something that in Europe is quite advanced, that a lot of countries already have uh, automatic uh, VAT feelings online, VAT feelings and cross-checking of these uh, debit and credit notes. So for example, in the UK, in Portugal, Italy, Spain, uh, Russia, all the cash registers of medium-sized uh, companies are actually connected to the government system, and this can be cross-checked with your VAT returns. So it's currently a trend as well that uh, data analytics is being used more and more by tax authorities. So, so there's this system in Japan, KSK, and he connects all regional tax bureaus and tax offices across the country and collects all this information and is able to 
to modify this information into tax returns. And eventually, this system can also extract this data and uh, exchange with other governments. So the case key system is like a huge database for whole Japan. In China, it's also being, uh, the tax risk profiling of taxpayers is also being currently done by bigger data analysis. So, and in the UK, uh, there's a very, very promising system called Connect. And in the next slide, as you can see, Connect is actually a huge uh, data extraction system which can extract not only tax, uh, tax uh, information, but also it can link that to other databases like Facebook, Airbnb, LinkedIn. So all taxpayers' um, data can be stored and reconciled. Um, the, the, the director of HMRC considers data uh, invaluable points in the HMRC policy, so we can we expect that uh, data mining and data conversion in the UK will become even more significant. Um, so after I gave you a few examples of what is actually uh, out there and how tax authorities are currently dealing with data and how they are collecting data. and Considering that together with taxpayers' rights that we explained it first, we are going to get to the point of okay, but how this technology, this technology on tax, will impact uh, our lives. Um, so, for example, we had this uh, hacking of the Bulgarian National Agency. So the tax uh, agency was actually hacked in this summer, and. 5 million individuals are actually personally affected by it. So uh, they expect that every working person in Bulgaria had their data leaked. Um, and the, the Data Protection Agency actually imposed a fine on the tax authority of 2 million. And the OECD reaction was to stop all exchange of information with Bulgaria. So this is quite significant. If you imagine a country of Bulgaria with 7 million people and 5 million people got their data leaked, um, this uh, it, it actually raises even more the question of, okay, and now oh, the tax authorities are becoming smarter, but how can they still protect and make sure that they have taxpayers' rights protected? So this hacking happened just this summer, so this was this year. So it, it, it makes it more important that uh, tax authorities not only start uh, investing in data for collection, but also for protection. Um, so said that, um, we have this uh, this picture. So basically before, uh, taxpayers just, just, just had control over the tax data, and they knew what to disclose and what not. Do you think that nowadays uh, we still have control of this data? Do we know what tax authorities have access or not? And are the lines of communication good enough and open enough to to, act, to actually tax payers being aware which information of them is being disclosed or not? So it can it can be scary, but at the same time, it also poses uh, more pressure on governments to make sure that uh, investments in data protection. Are currently being made. When we talk about the impact of just technology in tax in general, if you talk about the corporate side, that will be a streamline of compliance for sure with systems. So um, they will have to deal with full transparency. Since, as you see in the previous picture, you don't know which data has been disclosed or not, you need to deal with it. Um, investments will for sure, there will be more costs on software investments. Um, they'll have to, to take control of tax processes. Currently, that if tax was not discussed before in your organization, you need to deal with it. Uh, and controversy, because taxpayers rise, they will have bigger and bigger claims. We expect bigger and bigger claims to come. On governments, uh, in the future, we can expect real-time audits and improve on audit techniques, for example. Uh, the use of AI and robotics, 
which was already explained in the previous. So, X authorities already use AI and robotics, so we can expect that. Uh, and effective tax revenue collection. So, these are the impacts that you can foresee for tax. Okay, and that was quite fast actually. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna, I, this is my concluding comments, but I, I would also like to just open the question maybe to Mark or to anyone that wants to make some comments. Um, so the use of big data, it's uh, increasingly raising the question of data protection. So we need, there's huge risk for tax, taxpayers, as you can see with the Bulgarian case. And data protection agencies already claims that there's not enough attention uh, being posed for data protection. And like, what do you think would be the consequence of such amount of, of data being disclosed and compromised with hacking, for example? And even if you're fully compliant, how can you protect yourself from the loss of personal data? So that, these are the questions that are currently, that I couldn't like to pose to the audience and Maybe you have some cases that you would like to disclose about um, your country, your region, uh, something that you had experienced before. I would like to close up the, the webinar just uh, mentioning the fact that um, EPA currently does a tax technology heat map, which we mapped uh, the whole globe on the use of technology. And um, we have this currently available, and if anyone would like to know more about it or know how we can help with controversy, uh, yeah, please let me know. Please drop, drop me an email. You can see my email and Mark's email as well in the invitation. And I hope to see you guys in another webinar. Thank you.